Hello, hello. Happy to see all of you here. Got a couple of people stuck in the waiting room. Get them out. Hello, hello. So good to see you all. Wednesdays are my favorite day of the week, particularly because I get to see all of you party people. I've said that phrase twice today, not sure why, but I'm bringing it back. Miss McCalla, don't make fun of me. Uh, hope that everyone's Wednesday has uh, been great. We appreciate you joining us this evening. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, and hopefully have a few other families pop in once they see it, uh, the reminder on the Ken Vo. Um, but welcome, welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. Believe it or not, this is our seventh chat and chew since we officially started the year. I think it's been 10 because we did a couple over summer, but uh, we're excited tonight to talk a little bit about reopening and also um, to have the fabulous um, one and only Miss George here to talk um, about social emotional learning and all uh, of the feelings. So Miss Lopez, if you want to get us started, we can go to the next slide. Our agenda for this evening, we'll uh, just review our norms. We'll have a quick uh, community builder. We will have some grade level highlights, some general updates and reminders, and then we'll go into breakout rooms. So if your scholar is um, in hybrid, going to be in hybrid learning, you'll stay in the main room with me. We'll talk uh, shifts to reopening. And then if your scholar is not, you will um, get to learn about all the feelings with uh, Miss George. And I am seeing that we have a special guest this evening. Um, Miss Trez is here to put a quick plug in in just a moment. Miss Trez, I see you. Um, <laughs> we have got you on the docket. In fact, we'll put you closer to the top um, as soon as we get through our community builder. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, next slide, please. As you all know, if you've been here before, which most of you have, uh, we are. Uh, using Zoom as a platform for class and for our chat and choose. Um, this is a password protected meeting. It's important that we're not sharing the link outside of our community. Also important to reinforce that with our scholars that they are not sharing uh, any Zoom links outside of their community. That's going to make sure um, that no one who is not supposed to be there um, is there. We um, are going to be monitoring the chat stream as we go. We've got our great team leaders here uh, and other uh, staff members who will be able to respond to things that come in the chat as we go. Um, but if you uh, need to come off mute and ask a question, we'll have several times uh, for that to happen. You can use the raise a hand function. Um, if you just click on participants down at the bottom of your screen, you'll have the option to put up a little hand by your name, um, and that will indicate that you need to come off mute. It just helps us direct the conversation so we don't all start talking over one another. Um, and we do ask that you keep yourselves muted if you are not asking a question, just so that we can control background noise. Next slide, please. Uh, one thing to note, apologies that I forgot, we are recording the session so that we can post it uh, for our families uh, who are not able to be here tonight, uh, but the recording is primarily the screen. And look at that lovely little snapshot that was captured of you and I, Miss George. I don't know who the culprit is, but I have a sneaky suspicion. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Miss Lopez. These are just some of the ways that I look when I fill out the mood meter and I thought people should see, you know, and get an example of a thinking face. So we've mentioned, hi families, Miss Lopez, um, doing like evening duties, but We've mentioned in the past around what the ruler um, curriculum is, how we're going to be using it with scholars, and that we could be using it with families. Um, so I wanted to test the waters and do a mood meter, like an actual one with families. I know before, like, 
you've seen like images, we've done memes, um, we've put up the colors and the words and asked you how you're feeling. But we're actually going to try this out with you. This is a screenshot. It's actually live. I'm going to click on the link so you can see it. Um, and we're going to put this into practice. So we're going to go here. The link I have put it in the chat. I can put it again. I know that people are joining us as we go. Um, so there is the link to that. You are going to go on here and you're going to rate your energy level and degree of pleasantness. So if you kind of click around the colors, it'll give you some words. Like, do I feel accepted? Do I feel curious? I don't know. Maybe I feel a little dark in the blue. Maybe I feel disengaged or disappointed. Um, you want some more words. There's some more words here. So I don't want to talk the entire time. One person has already plotted their mood. Um, amazing, right? I'm a little nervous about this because it, it can be a little hard. It's, if you're on your phone, it's going to take you to your like Safari browser. It won't close out our conversation. So don't worry about that. It'll just take you to your browser on your phone. And then you can click back on Zoom or on whichever video device you're using. If you are on a computer, it will um, send you directly to a browser. And again, it will not close out your Zoom, so you will not miss this meeting. But it's one, look at that, we went from one to eight. Check us out. There are 50 people on here, but the fact that we got eight makes me really happy because this was really hard when I first started. Um, so we're gonna get a few more people in there. What I'm gonna do, Ms. Strong, is this is gonna be open through our entire session. I'm gonna have it open while people figure out how to plot their mood. And then if we can have like 45 seconds at the end today, and I can show everyone the results of what it would look like when we display this to everyone, because it's for family, it's for staff, it's for um, students as well. We definitely can. Um, so thank you everyone for putting yourself in the seat of staff and scholars. Uh, it's really, this is a, a program we're really excited to work with this year um, because we know that social emotional learning and mental health and well-being and are always uh, really important, but especially in uh, this year, 2020, where we've been navigating uh, a global pandemic. Um, we have been navigating a lot of racial strife and tension We've seen a lot of things happening in the world um, that have impacted us both directly and indirectly. And we believe that this year, more important than ever, uh, we have to equip ourselves as the adults with the skills that we need to recognize what we're feeling, to understand where it's coming from, to really label it, which is what the mood meter helps us do, is to really think, what am I feeling right now? because we know that even just the act of checking in with ourselves and labeling that feeling is a self-regulation strategy. It helps bring some distance between us and the feeling. And so we know the phrase, you know, put on your own oxygen mask first. It's never been more important as the adults um, who are in charge of the care of our scholars that we are learning to, um, regulate and process our own emotions um, so that we can teach scholars how to do that as well. Um, because there is no shortage of feelings on a day-to-day -day basis as we navigate the ends and outs of this year um, and everything that is going on. And so we appreciate your participation here. This is something you're gonna hear your scholars talking about, something we'll be doing regularly in class uh, so that we can reflect uh, with scholars and so that we can get to the place where we learn how to express and regulate what we're feeling so that we don't become crippled by where we are and we learn that like it's okay to feel where I'm feeling right now I can still find a way through it and can get to the other side so um, thank you for your participation there we'll come back to it and we'll see uh, where we are as a community uh, in just a little while so thank you for taking the time uh, to participate in the mood meter. Um, and Ms. Lopez, you can hit us on the next slide. So we're gonna shift into some grade level shout outs. And let's start off with fifth grade. All right, everyone, Ms. Colgan could not be here with us this evening. 
can't be a perfect world, you know, where everyone's available all Wednesdays all the time. And that's okay. Um, she wanted to make sure that I put in, well, she put in these and that I highlighted them for her. So shout out to M.O. for always going to office hours from the swap. Shout out to Somali Yamakata, Yam, Yam, Yamakata? I think I got it. Miracle, Leah, Layla, and Marwa for being rock stars in class. Marwa, I see you in the chat, so shout out to you um, for always being at our chat and shoes since you started with us. Um, shout out to Denise for showing merit with her studies from Miss Natalie. Shout out to Jaslyn for showing grit, working extra hard on homework, and understanding poetry from Miss Morin. Shout out to Melanie Rose. This is like your second week here for engaging in ELA class in a new strong way, Miss Morin. And then shout out to Amelia for putting so much detail and effort on her close reading mastery text assignment. Miss Morin in here with the shout out. All right, sixth grade. Hey everyone, Mr. Mar here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, just a few shout outs from our teachers from this past week. So we have shout out to Leah for being on top of all of her work and reaching out to her teachers for help. Um, this is from Ms. Castaneda. Um, I want to personally shout out Sarah Kay for messaging me and her teachers um, to make up work. Um, she texts me, emails me, anything possible, sends me pictures of her annotations, which is super amazing. Um, so I just want to shout out to her for just going that extra mile. Um, Mr. Jory wants to shout out Kylie and Kaya for staying on top of office hours and emailing us um, her anger when it was, I believe, three o'clock and we unfortunately got there at 3.01 and they were like, what is up? Why are you not here? I need my office hours. Um, so shout out to them. And it was a, it was a very respectful email, but they were clearly angry. Um, Ms. Patrick wants to shout out all the kids who have participated in the science baseline. Um, we know that testing has been going on a lot this past week or so. And so she is really happy with all of you all. And lastly, Mr. LaRose wants to shout out RBG for contributing in some great conversations during history this week. I know Mr. LaRose is a little upset because he's always been an ER advisor and now he has to take over my reign as an RBG advisor, but he is loving RBG currently. So he wants to shout you all out. All right, here with the seventh grade highlights, Ms. Chen wanted to shout out Chances for always being on task, participating and monitoring her own understanding in math class. I wanted to shout out Mia and Ashley in BDT um, for showing a lot of growth in their class participation and in the really high quality of the independent work that they've been turning in. Mr. Melendez was really feeling the love this week. There are a bunch of shout outs from him. He wanted to shout out Esther for her amazing work and his history class, always being prepared for class and sharing really interesting thoughts during their class discussions. Safari for making up all of her old work and staying on task during class. And Alexis for showing a lot of growth, making it to class on time, participating and making up her old work. Those were all from Mr. Melendez for some history shout outs. Um, Ms. Chen also wanted to shout out Jasleen O'Neill for attending math small group, even when it's not required asking questions and being ready to participate. Ms. O'Daniel wants to shout out Hattie for showing amazing growth and responsibility during her check-ins. Ms. O'Daniel and Hattie have check-ins every single day. I feel like I complain when I have a check-in once a week, so Hattie's really on top of it with the maturity there. Um, Mackenzie T is now consistently making it to class. We know there were some hurdles there, participating like she hasn't missed a single day. And Naraya has been just so patient and showing a lot of perseverance this week with some Google Classroom challenges. She's proactive, advocating for herself, and always making it to small group, even in the face of some challenges with tech. All right, eighth grade. Um, they had their Socratic seminar for history with Ms. Smith and she really just wanted to shout out the girls because to do this virtually was the first time ever they had to done this, but to see how serious they took it, how much work they put into it, she literally was just like so blown away and was just thinking about them doing their projects in high school and how can they take it seriously and how can they reference it. So she wanted to shout out Dallas, Savannah, India, 
Saray, Caitlin, Lauren, Shade, Natia, Leanne, Layla, Lola, Jeliza, Melina, Tyla, Kamora, Emily, Zaniah, Brittany, and Katie, and also Kaylin, Alania, Al 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 Aliana, Isabella, Leilani, T, Anaya, Sarai, Tatiana, and Sierra. I've never heard so many vowels in my life. Wow, that caught me off guard. Um, but they really did such an amazing job and she was really blown away and we just really wanted to dedicate this to them because we know how much work they had put into this because it was their first unit assessment and they did an amazing job. So shout out to these wonderful, lovely eighth graders. Awesome. Shout out, shout out, and shout out to all the families on this call that are at home with these amazing kiddos, making sure that they stay on top of their game while we know you're balancing a million things. Uh, so shout out to you all as well. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide, Ms. Lopez. Awesome. Attendance, attendance, attendance. Um, our school-wide priority this week is to really hone in on our attendance. Um, so our school-wide goal is to be at 95% attendance as our daily average. And what we have noticed here in the past couple of weeks is that we've started to see um, some significant kind of variance in our attendance um, with some grade levels uh, declining pretty consistently throughout the course of the weeks. Um, and so we wanted to come together uh, as a full school community and just put a plug in um, for attendance. You are right, Miss Delaware, you are on your game. I see you in the chat and getting bonus attendance points for the chat and chew. Love the scholarship. Um, so wanted to uh, just share uh, transparently what our percentages were last week. Um, so our fifth grade um, was at 88.6. That's down 2.8% from the week before. Our sixth grade was at 87.2, which was up 1% from last week. Um, our seventh grade was at 81.8, which was down 8.2% from last week. Um, and our eighth grade, um, we're at 94.6%, um, down 0.6 from the week before. So we're seeing, and shout out to the eighth graders um, and eighth grade families and eighth grade teachers and teams, um, eighth grade's been leading the way and setting the bar and maintaining pretty close to that 95% average, but we need everyone um, to get there. Uh, it is not okay with me. Uh, to be at 88% attendance. I did the math, 12% of my school uh, is way too many students uh, for me not to have in class regularly. Uh, some schools in remote learning are getting excited about hitting 75%. We are not those schools. Uh, we need our girls in class, whether that is in person or remotely. Um, and so we need your help. I cannot have 12% of my kiddos unaccounted for. Um, and so what we are asking is um, that you, we know it happens to me as an adult, if I don't have a reminder set uh, and I'm working on my computer, uh, a time for a meeting can come and go and I may not realize that I need to be logged on somewhere. So one thing that's helped uh, a lot of families and students with this is to set reminders in their phones um, or on a device uh, so that it beeps and goes off and reminds them uh, when they need to log in. Um, another tip is to make sure that they are charging their Chromebook or their device overnight. That will help ensure that it's not dying during the day um, and that that won't cause an interruption to their attendance. Make sure that they know their small group schedule. Um, so we will be, uh, if your child gets mandated uh, sets services, you'll be hearing from their teachers this week about their concrete schedule for that moving forward. Um, if they, whoop, someone be careful with the annotation feature. You know, Ms. Strong's not that good at presenting yet and I can't figure out how to erase it sometimes. Um, so please make sure uh, that they know their small group schedule and are attending those groups. 
um, whether that's counseling with Ms. George or whether that is intervention. And make sure that your scholar uh, knows how to check their, their email. I know that Mr. Marr and multiple uh, teachers and teacher leaders are sending uh, schedule reminders to girls pretty regularly. Um, and so that's another place that they can go to just get reminders about where they need to be. Um, and so just a reminder, scholars must log in to all of their synchronous classes and their small groups daily. It's not enough for them to just submit work. They need to be logging on. I know that remote learning, um, we are getting much better at it and our teachers are incredible. We know it's not that easy for some scholars and we know it doesn't take the place of in-person learning. But what we also know is that in order to prevent any further slide for scholars, they need the instruction from the teachers. Um, it, it is not enough for them to just complete work on their own. And so they must log into classes in order to be counted fully present. It's not enough to just come to advisory and then to complete their work. So next week, I believe I'll be sharing an update and we will be way closer uh, to 95% as a school. Uh, because again, attendance is really, really important. We need your scholars there. We need them engaging with their peers and their teachers. We need them getting the content. Um, and so we appreciate your support with the attendance. Next slide, please, Miss Lopez. Awesome, Q Community Council Executive Board election is upon us uh, for our Community Council Board members that are, or our Community Council members that are here. Uh, shout out to you. We have the uh, greatest Community Council in the land. Um, and there are four positions on the executive board, um, president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, and so the elections are going to be coming up uh, Thursday, October 22nd. The forms uh, to become a candidate and join the e-board are due. Uh, Ms. Lopez just put uh, the link to that form in the chat for anyone that is interested. Um, but voting will end uh, on November 3rd. Uh, we'll be sharing out the ballots starting the week of October 26th, um, and then we will finalize voting um, and solidify executive board positions on uh, November 3rd. So if you are interested in getting involved, uh, please check out that form. Um, we could not do what we do without our incredible community council. Um, so shout out to uh, Marie and Yolanda and Joanne, if they're on here, uh, we appreciate all that you do every day, whether remotely or in person. Ms. Trez, your time has come. Thank you, everyone. Um, just want to steal three minutes from everyone's time this evening um, to just stress the fact that this year, DOH and the Department of Education has mandated that every single scholar, whether they are attending in-person classes or remote classes should have in a physical filled out that's up to date and current as well as an updated vet, um, immunization record. So doctors offices across the city have been working hard to get these things out to all of the families. So we do need you to make sure that you are setting that in for all of your scholars. I've already contacted my staff and your POCs will be assisting you in getting me this documentation. Um, there is an email here on this slide that I would like you to send that information to. You can, if you do not have access to scanning it to email, you can also take a picture of it for me, have it as an attachment to the email that is girls prep, lower east side middle at girlsprep.org. Just make sure that you put your scholar's name in the subject line and you name the document so that way we can upload that to their records. It is really important. Um, we start to exempt kids from coming to school and they get exclusion letters starting November 1st. So I don't want scholars to have to miss a second of remote. This is hard as it is. It is enough. And I do want to thank the families that have already sent in. We've got about 45 physical sent in. So thank you to all the super moms out there that are juggling everything and now we're able to get that information to me ASAP. Um, also, just you can also email me in that email if you have any questions, any way that I can assist you all um, during your busy schedules to make sure that we get this documentation for your scholars it will be greatly appreciated.
Thank you all for giving me this time this evening. Thank you, Ms. Trez, fearlessly working behind the scenes always, keeping the school running almost single-handedly sometimes. Uh, Ms. Trez for President 2020. I was a little late on getting the nomination in, but I'm gonna work on that. Um, so just want to stamp really clearly that in order for your scholar to come in the building, if they are enrolled in hybrid learning, they have to have these forms submitted it is critical that we are taking every step possible to ensure the health and safety of our community. Um, and while these things are standard uh, requirements each year, it's even more important as we are getting ready to reopen our building. Um, and we wanna make sure that all scholars are up to date. I'm also gonna put a shameless plug in for a flu shot um, as we are getting ready to come up on flu season. Highly, highly recommended. Um, and for those of you joining hybrid learning, we'll talk in a little bit. Um, we are highly recommending that all of our families and scholars um, regularly get a COVID test. Um, it is, while not a mandated requirement right now, we are highly recommending um, that as well so that we can do all of our parts to keep our community safe. Um, so thank you, Ms. Trez. Immunizations, please reach out. I put the uh, email in the chat for those of you uh, that may need to email Ms. Trez with any questions. Thank you. Awesome. Power School Parent Portal and Grade Books, all of the fun things in all of the land. Um, so for those of you who are returning families, you know that PowerSchool is our primary student information system. It is where our report cards are generated. It is our primary system for permanent records with grades, um, all the good stuff, attendance, et cetera. Um, so the PowerSchool parent portal is going live tomorrow. Um, your point of contact will be sharing a letter that has your login information and a step-by-step -step guide of how you can log into um, the parent portal. I want to make sure that I draw a few distinctions between the PowerSchool gradebook that you'll see in the parent portal and the Google Classroom gradebook that might be sending you those notifications if you've signed up for emails. I um, want to make sure that you understand the difference of what you're going to see where. So the PowerSchool Gradebook is, as I said, your, it's our official student information system. So your scholars current grade in each of their classes based on our weighted grading scale are going to be visible in PowerSchool. It's also going to show your scholars attendance. Google Classroom Gradebook which we have been using as we've launched Google Classroom in remote learning. This is primarily used to assign and collect student work in remote learning. So think about papers that would be given to students in person for classwork, for homework. Now, anything that teachers give students is going through Google Classroom and is gonna end up showing up automatically in the gradebook whether or not it is one of the um, graded assignments for the week that factor into their overall grade. So again, you think about the Google Classroom gradebook as kind of having everything in there that students um, are being given in class, similar to what their notebook or papers or binders would be like in the school building. Um, teachers use that platform to give feedback to students on work, but Google Classroom Gradebook is not going to show your scholars like final grade or weighted averages. So again, what you can see right now is their performance on the grade, the assignments that have been graded. Um, and you can get notifications if they do not submit an assignment. Um, but it isn't set up in the same way that our PowerSchool Gradebook is set up. So again, as a parent, I want you to think about the Google Classroom Gradebook as a place to get a regular notification if an assignment is not submitted. Because you can sign up for the parent notifications and you'll get those emails. But other than that, you have no real visibility through the parent login to see what is that assignment, what are the details, what was your scholar's score on an assignment, that's not visible to you 
in, in the Google Classroom gradebook stuff. It will be in PowerSchool. Um, let's shift to the next slide. So just want to remind everyone of our weighted grading categories. So in the past, before remote learning, uh, we had classwork and homework separated into two separate categories. This year, we have merged those two into a category you'll see called coursework. Um, we know that the nature of remote learning means that we're not giving as many official homework assignments as we were in the past, so we want to make sure that the gradebook stays balanced. So the coursework category is worth 50% of your scholars overall grade. So this is work that students do um, daily and submit to teachers. Sometimes it's collaborative. They might work on this with uh, another student. And it's not always graded fully on accuracy, right? Sometimes classwork and homework are collaborative. They're sometimes graded for accuracy. Sometimes it's balanced with their engagement and their effort on a task, depending on what the assignment is. Because we want to make sure our grade books are a balance of effort and participation and accuracy, right? We do not want, uh, we don't want it to be out of balance and you not have a clear picture of where your scholar stands. Participation is the second category and it is worth 10%. Um, and that is around your scholars uh, engagement in class discussions and activities. Um, and then summative assessments are worth 40% of your scholars overall grade. So Summative assessments are tasks that are completed independently. They are not, uh, there's no collaboration. There's no teacher coaching like there might be on classwork. Um, they are meant to measure student mastery and are graded fully on accuracy. So this lets us know what's, what's stuck and what didn't stick um, for students within lessons. It can include exit tickets, which are things that could go out. They're like snapshots of, of a daily assessment. Could be a quiz, could be a unit assessment. All of those would go under what's gonna come up as the summative assessment category in PowerSchool. Next slide, please. So what you're gonna see in the PowerSchool gradebook when you log in, um, because we have been actively getting uh, that platform set up and ready to go. Um, and so what you will see when you log into the parent portal for right now, is you're going to see that teachers have entered an assignment that reflects their the average of weeks one through seven in each category. So you're going to see an assignment that may say weeks one through seven coursework, and it's going to have your scholars average for their classwork and homework over the course of the um, time we've been in remote learning. You'll see the same thing for participation. You'll see the same thing for assessments. Um, so you will see one entry with their average currently um, that is reflective of the work that they've done so far. Moving forward, what you'll see regularly in the PowerSchool Parent Portal is two graded assignments per week minimum with a balance of assignments in all categories. So one week, it may be that there's a participation in a coursework grade added. The following week, it might be that it's an assessment and a coursework grade um, added. But you will see weekly that there are two graded assignments at a minimum in PowerSchool. And you'll see an, an M if the work is missing. Again, Google Classroom, you can get those missing notifications immediately. But PowerSchool, you will also be able to see what was the student's grade on an assignment, and if a student is missing it, it will say M for missing. Next slide. Okay. Um, I know that was a lot of information about grade books. We are going to have Q&A um, at the end where we can talk uh, about any questions that you have there. Your point of contact is also going to be able to talk you through specifics. But why don't we just take about 30, well, a minute to do two things. One, just go ahead and type any questions you've got right now about any of that information in the chat so we have it captured and can come back to it. The second thing I'd like you to do in the next minute is if your scholar is not opting into hybrid learning, you are staying fully remote, 
I'd love for you to change your name on Zoom to a number one so that Ms. Lopez uh, and I can get you put in the correct breakout room. So two things happening in the next minute. If you are not opting up, oh, says you can't change the name. Can one of my fearless grade team leaders who's better at this than I am tell me how I can change that setting? If you know how. Going to settings. Change it already. You should be able to do it. Amazing. I knew someone would be faster than me. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Uh, you should now, uh, Ms. O'Neill, be able to change it. Uh, I see you, Mara, coming in. You know how to, I'm telling you, the kids are good, y'all. They know how to do all the things now. Um, okay, so you are, again, doing two things, changing your name to a number one if your scholar is not in hybrid learning or not opting in, and you're just dropping any lingering questions um, from the information just shared about grade books, just go ahead and drop it in the chat so it, you don't forget it. Now I'm going to stop talking for a minute and let you think, and we'll get these uh, breakout rooms situated. I'm gonna go ahead and open the room for everybody I see that's currently a number one. Give everybody else a little bit more time if you need to change your Zoom name. Principal Strong, can I ask you a question? Sure thing. Um, I was wondering, because my daughter's teacher said that they threw out all the kids' stuff that was in the locker. Not, not thrown out. Any uh, personal items left in the locker were bagged up. Um, and if they were not picked up at locker distribution dates, uh, Ms. Denolis uh, is your, your go-to. She can uh, set up a time uh, if you need to pick up uh, the belongings. Yeah, because I emailed you and I asked if you could call me, but I never got a response. Ugh, I'm so sorry. If that ever happens and you don't hear back from me within 36 hours, please hit that back up to the top of my inbox. Because as much as I try, sometimes they get lost in there. Um, so I will make sure to connect you with Mr. Nolis so we can get those uh, uh, personal belongings taken care of. Okay, great. And um, also, I decided I'm going to switch Danielle to um, remote only for right now. Okay. How do I go about that? Yep. Um, so all you need to do is email Miss Lopez. She is. Uh, I'm going to put, gonna put a link to the waitlist form on there and you will hear from me soon. Uh, she wants to change from hybrid to remote, not the opposite. Okay, yeah, same thing. All right. Go in the same place. Excellent, excellent. So that form's going in there for you. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you into the other breakout room. Uh, so that you can get all the information about social emotional learning uh, since you are switching that choice. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Ms. Lopez, you're still sharing, just so you know. Yeah, I came back for that. <laughs> all right, everyone, we are going to go ahead and dive in uh, to some reopening updates uh, with the rest of this group. Get these 
I think I got everybody to the right breakout room. I'm not seeing any more number ones. So I'm gonna close that out. Um, and then, okay, Serenity, I will get you to that room, no problem. If there was anyone else that I missed, if you just wanna drop it in the chat, if you can't change your name, I'm happy to get you over there. Hi, this is Sarah. This is Sarah's mom. Um, you say number one is uh, to be uh, hybrid? Uh, number one is if you're not hybrid. This room is if you are going hybrid. Would you like me to switch you to um, the breakout room? No, fully I want remote? Sarah to be, yeah, fully remote. Fully remote. Okay, I'll get you in the right place. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Okay, one second, friends. Apologies. All right. So that is Rosa. I'm going to get you right on over. Okay, you should see it pop up. Okay, friends, if anybody else needs to shift, I'm seeing one more, and that is iPhone. I'm gonna get you right over there. Uh, Miss Lopez, if you don't mind um, just looking at uh, the chat, if anybody else says they need to go to uh, room one and just send them on over. I think I got everybody. Um, all right, for my hybrid crew, let's dive in to talking about some uh, some in-person learning updates. You can go and hit us with the next slide, Ms. Lopez. So um, as you all know, and you received a letter uh, from me on Saturday, um, we were disappointed um, to have to share uh, that our building, out of an abundance of caution, um, our building was closed um, for 14 days, uh, which has resulted in us pushing back um, the start of hybrid learning for scholars. Um, and while we were eager and are eager um, to get our girls in the building, and we know how disruptive uh, the changes are for you as the families with planning, uh, we are putting the health and safety of the community first. I'm in mean, following all of the DOH and DOE protocols around um, building closure. So I just wanted to share with you all, you may have seen this slide at a public prep town hall, but we haven't talked about it um, here in a while. So I just wanted to share with you what the protocol is going to be. Um, and so in the event that there is a confirmed positive case on a campus, um, that will result in that pod of students uh, closing for the 14-day quarantine. So one class, one confirmed case in one pod would only result in that pod closing. Um, what we had this past week um, even though our scholars are not in the building, our co-located school east side was in session. And so what we found out um, was that Eastside had a second confirmed case, um, which you can see over here on is like the third set of boxes. Um, because they, uh, their students and staff are regularly being tested, like that is working um, and they were able to uh, catch this early on. Um, but the standard protocol, if there is more than one positive case in a building, um, is that the school building closes initially for a 24-hour investigation by the Department of Health. Um, what they do is work um, with the New York City um, contact tracing team to investigate the positive cases and make a determination of whether or not it is safe uh, to reopen the school building in 24 hours or if they need to close it uh, for a 14-day closure. Um, and so we got notice uh, that there was a second positive case um, and that it was also going to mean that out of an abundance of caution, they closed the, the building. 
um, even though we did not yet have students in, and even though the exposure and the positive cases were not members of the public prep community. Um, again, out of an abundance of caution um, and following the guidance of the Department of Health, uh, we've closed our building and uh, shifted our timeline. So uh, I see that Ms. Smith has raised a hand. If you wanna go ahead and come off mute, I'm happy to take the question. Yes, Ms. Strong, I'm sorry. I didn't get the notification for the breakout room for the fifth graders. Okay, I'm gonna get, uh, Ms. Lopez, will you get Ms. Smith moved over to room one? Sorry about that, Ms. Smith. We'll get you right where you need to be. I don't have no, access to that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, no problem. I heard you, Ms. Lopez. I'll get on it right now. All right. So in the event um, that we have anything like this happen in the future, you're gonna be notified in a few ways. Number one, um, if your scholar is in um, a pod with a positive case or um, is exposed to or came in contact with um, a positive case, you will be notified uh, via a letter from me um, the day that we, the day that that is confirmed. Um, so there will be same day communication via an email letter and via a Kenvo message. Um, similarly, with the uh, results of a, an investigation, if there has to be a temporary closure, uh, you will receive notification from me via email and via Kenvo, um, and I will keep you up to date as I know. Um, more information from the Situation Room, uh, which is the very crazy name of the group of people that is handling all of this uh, for our New York City schools. Um, so again, we are uh, disappointed to have to push it back, but uh, we are feeling confident uh, that continued uh, following of the protocols and procedures put in place um, and following the guidance of the DOH is going to make sure that we can uh, reopen safely. And so uh, that is going to continue to come front and center. Last week, Ms. Reeves shared um, a website where families can also sign up to receive direct email notifications from um, the Department of Education Situation Room, because they are sending what they're calling the daily roundup email uh, that alerts families in any DOE school building of any positive cases. What I will say, um, when I saw the email Ms. Reeves shared with me, uh, it, it gives you the positive cases for the actual building, right? So our public building is M060. Um, and so as you read the letter, it's gonna say, Dear Family of Girls Prep Lower East Side Middle, da 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 da, da pos any information about positive cases. It does not necessarily mean that that is a positive case in our school community. Um, it gives you information on the building. Anything that is specific from our school community or anytime our building is closed, you'll get that uh, information directly from me. Uh, next slide for me, Ms. Lopez, awesome. So, we have shifted our reopening timeline. I actually think that this is easier to see in the visual slides that I have coming next, uh, but I wanted to leave this up for a moment in case you wanna snap a photo of this with your cell phone, um, if, you, if it is helpful for you to just have to reference. This outlines the shift in our timeline. So our building is closed until the 21st, which means that all of our staff are working remotely. Wednesdays right now, as you know, are continuing to remain asynchronous for kids as we uh, prepare staff for reopening and we have full days of training. Staff will be back in the building on the 22nd, which is next Thursday. I do want to flag that in order to move as quickly as possible to get your kiddos in, the 22nd is also going to be an asynchronous day for students so that we can spend that first day back in the building wrapping up any loose ends that we have so that we are fully on track um, for pod orientation. That is now going to happen the week of October 26th. That was initially going to be the first day 
we had a full four day week. Now it is the day that pod orientation is going to begin. So if you have a scholar in sixth and eighth grade, your first day for orientation is the 26th. If your scholar's in fifth or seventh, your first day for orientation is the 27th. So we are continuing with that phased in approach in the first week um, where each group of scholars will only have two grade levels in the building at a time and they will each get two days um, of orientation. Wednesdays again are remaining asynchronous for right now and all students are remote. November 2nd is a Monday. It's the first Monday all students are on site. So that's the Monday after pod orientation week. All four grade levels are on site. November 3rd, very important day. It is election day. Everybody go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote. Vote early. Vote that day. As long as you vote, make sure that that happens. Um, November 3rd, election day, there is no school for students. Um, that has been on our uh, year-long calendar, and so that stays the same. November 4th, that's the Wednesday, right? That is a remote day, because Wednesdays are going to remain remote. But November 4th is the day we are shifting to synchronous instruction for small groups on Wednesdays. So again, it's asynchronous on Wednesdays up until November 4th. November 4th, your scholars will have small groups live with their teacher and office hours returning on Wednesdays. And then November 5th is our second day with all students on site. That's a Thursday. They're there that Friday as well, the 6th. And then November 9th is now the first full four day week with all scholars on site. I know if you're like me or like anyone, your head's probably swimming hearing all of those dates uh, in a sequence like that. Again, I'd recommend taking a picture of this slide with your cell phone. Um, uh, you also uh, can reference the letter that I sent out on Saturday. Ms. Lopez, if you go to the next slide. The letter breaks down the schedule and the timeline uh, in a little more of a visually appealing way. Uh, so again, pod orientation is now the week of October 26th through October 30th. Each grade level will have two days on site and they will have three days virtual in pod orientation week. Next slide for me, Ms. Lopez. We start our hybrid learning on the week of 11-2. That's the following week. These are full days. As a reminder, arrival is 8-30. Staggered dismissal will start at 4-15. And all students will be out of the building by 4-25. And so this week, scholars have uh, three days on site, one day virtual, which is the Wednesday, and then again, there's no school on the third for election day. Next slide, please. That leads us to November 9th, the first full four day week with all scholars in the building. And again, these remain full days. You can get the full breakdown of that in the letter that I sent for you to reference um, so that you have that uh, in one place. Go ahead, Ms. Lopez. These are reminders from last week, and I know that this was a lot of information today and we're coming close on time. I am gonna hang back a little late uh, to address any unanswered questions. I do know some of my team members may have to hop off, so please uh, feel free to do that. I'm gonna try to move as quickly as I can through these last few slides. Um, and Ms. Lopez, if you don't mind just sending Ms. George uh, a message, uh, and seeing if she needs a few extra minutes in her breakout room. Uh, you can tell her actually to just send people back over uh, when she wraps up. Um, so before you come to school, again, please make sure vaccinations are up to date and get Ms. Trez that information. Um, on a day-to-day -day before your scholar comes to school, uh, we are highly recommending you take their temperature at home. 
If a scholar has a temperature of 100 degrees or more, they will not be allowed to attend school that day. We will have to alert you. And if they are not self-dismissed, we will need you to come pick them up. Um, so it's better to know before you head out whether or not your scholar has a temperature. Please keep them home if they are sick. Um, I know we have all been in the position where we as ourselves have powered through being ill and being at work um, and times and kiddos have come to school not feeling well. This cannot be the year that we do that. Um, please keep them home if they are not feeling well. Um, you're also going to receive a health screener, a questionnaire um, that's going to be sent out daily via Kinbo. It is really, really important that every day you are filling that out before your scholar comes to school. We will be receiving notice on our end of families that have completed it. And then one of two things can happen. If you're dropping your scholar off, you can show us on your cell phone. You're going to get a big green check when it's done. You can just hold that up and we're good to go. Um, if your scholar is coming to school on her own, one of two things can happen. Uh, she can hold up the green check um, and show that that is completed, or we can look up on the form and see, yes, uh, Maura, we see you're here, we see your family's filled it out, you are good to go. Um, but it's really, really important. If it's not done, we will have to um, essentially move your scholar to the back of the arrival line and have one of our staff members support um, in completing that before they come in the building. It's really critical that we have accurate records um, of daily screening as we are welcoming kiddos back in the building. It's also something that we as staff are doing every day. Next, Ms. Lopez. So again, staggered arrival is going to start at 8.30 a.m. Fifth and sixth grade are going to come in through the courtyard. Seventh and eighth grade are going to enter on 11th Street. Um, what you will see when it happens, you will see that there are six-foot markers on the sidewalk and in the courtyard for students and families to socially distance while they line up waiting to come in the building. It's really important that we are on time for arrival, but I do need to remind you that we will not have staff outside to monitor scholars before 8.30 a.m. We are also um, increasing our uh, safety protocols in the morning and screening of staff, and so there is not going to be uh, anyone available uh, to supervise students prior to 8.30. What we're asking, if you're coming with your scholar, or if your scholar's coming on their own, we need everyone maintaining, <clears throat> excuse me, social distance in those lines. We must be wearing masks. So I'm asking that you are wearing a mask and modeling that for scholars when you pick them up or drop them off and that you're reinforcing that um, if scholars are coming on their own. Uh, as scholars get to the door, we'll be there bright eyed and masked uh, with a good morning and a how are you and a digital thermometer to take your temperature and to make sure that you are, your scholar is good to go. We don't actually have to take your temperature, families, just your scholars. Um, again, if the scholar's temperature is over 100 degrees, we will not be able to allow them in the building. Um, we will notify parents immediately um, and we will need you to respond so that we can ensure that the child um, is able to safely get home. Um, so again, you will see the markers on the ground. You will see places to stand and spread out. You'll see school leadership at the door uh, with a mask and a smile uh, and a thermometer. And then we will be bringing students in. And as they're coming in, we will make sure that they're maintaining six feet of distance. Um, so it's going to be staggered. One's going to come in. We've got markers up the hallway and up the stairs. Um, and so as students come in, they will sanitize their hands and then they will proceed uh, to grab their breakfast and to get to their advisory classroom. Next slide, please. Dismissal is gonna be through the same uh, entrance that you, your scholar comes in for arrival. 
I have to, I cannot say it enough. We really need your support with on-time pickup. Um, there are a lot of implications for having scholars uh, waiting for late pickup. We are trying our best to minimize uh, exposure between students in other pods, with the exception of arrival, dismissal, and recess. And so it puts us in a uh, real predicament if scholars are not able to be picked up on time. Um, unfortunately, if it is something that becomes an issue, we will not be able to keep your scholar in remote learning. Um, and so if you anticipate a challenge, please reach out to your point of contact uh, so we can put in a plan um, for that. But we it cannot, uh, we cannot have students uh, remaining on campus while we wait for late pickup. Um, same protocols as dismissal as at arrival. Please make sure um, when you come to pick up your scholar, you will see a staff member standing with a sign that says fifth grade families, seventh grade families. They will show you where to wait for your scholars to come out of the building. They will also be asking to see your ID and checking it against our dismissal roster. So please make sure that your scholar's uh, blue card has accurate information for who's allowed to pick up their scholar. Because until we get uh, a, a handle on faces to names and all of our new teachers know you, we are gonna be asking to see identification at pickup so we can make sure that all scholars get with the correct adults. Um, and so you will, again, you'll see the signs that say where you should go for your grade level we ask again, you have a mask, you socially distance while you wait, um, and that you have ID ready to show the teachers who will be ready to check and make sure um, that they get your scholar out of the building and to you quickly and effectively. Next slide, Ms. Lopez. All right, this is again review materials they need. Please make sure that their Chromebook comes with them to school every day, fully charged with their charger. We will provide headphones for them. You do not have to send those. This is huge. Please make sure you are sending them with three to four reusable masks. We have plenty of paper masks and PPE everywhere in the event that scholars need one throughout the day. That will not be a problem. But what we are finding and hearing from a lot of our colleagues in the sector is that students need to change their masks frequently. They get wet throughout the day um, and students get uncomfortable. And so it's important that they are, uh, you are sending them with some backups so that they can change their mask throughout the day if needed. We don't want them sitting there in an uncomfortable situation. Um, and again, we will be able to provide a disposable mask um, if it is necessary, but we are asking that you plan to send them with several backups. Please also send them with a clear, filled, reusable water bottle. Uh, students will be able to refill it at water fountains throughout the day, but we are not going to have students putting their mouth down to the water fountain and using it in a traditional sense. So we are asking all scholars coming in the building have a reusable water bottle that they bring it filled to start the day. Please make sure you are sending them with a navy blue sweater without a hood. If you've ever been in a New York City school building, you know it is hot in there when we turn the heat on, but for proper ventilation, we are going to have windows open, an exhaust fan going, and the AC fan, not the air conditioner, but the fan, uh, the fan, uh, running to move air uh, in the room. We want to make sure that scholars can uh, stay warm if needed. Um, again, I don't anticipate temperature being a huge issue when the heat is turned on, um, but also just want to reiterate, bring that navy blue sweater without a hood. There is a great fleece zip up on Amazon right now that is fewer, it's less than $20. It's really thick and warm. Um, and it, it provides a little more if you know that you've got a cold natured kiddo who's going to want more than just like a cardigan. Um, and then make sure that you, they bring the supplies that were in their supply kit that we issued. If your scholar, if you didn't come get a supply kit, um, we will be able to issue your scholar that when they come in the building. But if you did come get a supply kit, please just send your scholar with those supplies so that they have what they need. It included 
a calculator if they're sixth, seventh, or eighth grader. It included pencils and pens. It included a five-star notebook. Um, and it included their ELA novel, right? It's gonna be important that they have a pencil case uh, because again, we're not sharing materials. Um, and so while we will have replacement pens and pencils, no kiddo is gonna go without. What we're not gonna do is be borrowing from one another. So it's important that they have a personal case uh, that they can keep their uh, pens and pencils, um, their extra mask as needed uh, so that they can change it throughout the day. Please don't bring stuffed animals, any food that is not on our healthy food policy. COVID has not changed the fact that Arizona iced teas are not happening in school or Takis or any of the other amazing delicious treats that we like to have once in a while. Uh, so please make sure uh, we'll be sending this policy out again as a reminder to families, um, but make sure that scholars, if they are bringing their own food, that we are um, upholding the healthy food policy. And minimalism, if ever it was a thing, it is now. Really don't bring any more than what they need. I know locker decorations are an exciting part of middle school, but for right now, we're asking you to keep that to a minimum and only send scholars with the things that they need for class. Uh, I like locker decoration, that's cute. I'm with you, Mara. We like locker, I got you, don't worry, girl. We'll get there, I promise. Next slide, please, Ms. Lopez. Again, transferable takeaway, bring a sweater. We are in full uniform when we're back, full uniform. Tops, bottoms, and shoes. Um, so please make sure your scholar's in their white or purple uh, girls prep top. It can be the polo or the Oxford, that they are in a navy blue bottom it can be a skirt. It can be um, navy blue pants. Uh, there's a kilt at Flynn O'Hara uh, that they can also wear. It does not have to be a logo bottom. It can be navy blue pants from Old Navy, navy blue pants from Amazon. Um, as long as they are just solid navy blue plant, navy blue pants, and not navy blue sweat pants. We got to get out of the sweatpants, folks. We got to get into the regular pants. We're back in the, we're back in, in the building. Um, a sweater, again, it does not have to be a Flynn O'Hara embroidered sweater. We know those are very pricey. Those do work. Uh, but again, no hoods, please. No hoods, no hoods, please, no hoods. We want them to be warm. We also want them to be in uniform. And then all black or navy shoes. Um, they exist. We've got plenty of links uh, that we can share with you. They run the gamut. We've got the plain old version that is just a uniform shoe, affordable. And I know that there's all kinds of expensive sneakers that I know nothing even about that are still all black. So please make sure it is all black, not black and red or black and pink or black and anything, just all black or all navy um, with a flat rubber sole. In the winter, if they need to wear cold weather boots, they're welcome to do it to and from the building, but they need uniform shoes to change into. They can keep it in their lockers, um, but they, they will need those all black or navy flat rubber sole sneakers or shoes in the building. Next slide, please, Ms. Lopez. Bazinga. That is the end of this uh, set of information that I know I just gave you at a rapid pace, and I also know that we're over on time, uh, but there's a lot going on, and I wanted to make sure that you were prepared um, and able to support your scholars. So um, I am happy to stay on and answer questions if people need to come off of mute um, and ask any questions about anything we've gone over tonight. Um, please just feel free to raise a hand, and then we'll call you off mute to share. I don't know if you can see the chat, Ms. Strong, um, but there is a question about what students need to bring for pod orientation. Um, and there was a question, oh, how imperative is it that the water bottles are clear? Like if a family's already purchased one and it's not clear? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, in terms of supplies, um, I'll address the water bottle first and then we'll go back to the supplies. Ms. Uh, Lopez, do you mind flipping back up to the supplies slide? Um, so the reason that the water bottle uh, needs to be clear um, is so that we can make sure that students are bringing water to school, um, not Arizona iced tea, not something with sugar in it that if it spills, uh, it creates quite a mess on the floor. Um, and so we are asking that the water bottles be clear, um, again, so that we can make sure that students um, have water in those bottles and we don't end up in a situation where it's accidentally um, Arizona iced tea. Um, and then in terms of the other supplies, please make sure, um, again, it's right here on the slide, um, make sure that they bring the supplies from their supply kit if you've got one. If you did not, we can uh, give you one when your scholar gets here. And it has pens and pencils, a five-star notebook, um, and a calculator if they're sixth to eighth grade. For eighth graders, it is a very expensive TI-83 calculator that we purchased so that each scholar can have use of one all year long. They are almost $100 a piece. So it is really important that they take care of it and that they keep it with them because that is their one TI-83 Girls Prep Lower East Side Middle issued calculator. Um, again, if you did not pick it up, we can provide that. Otherwise, the only supplies that they need to bring um, are posted right here on this slide. Just again, putting in a plug for multiple masks uh, so that the girls can change those as needed throughout the day. And Mara, I hope you're at every chat and chew because I'm loving your comments in the chat. I know your head is probably swimming with all the facts. That happens to us too. <laughs> Oof. Such a great onomatopoeia. Did any leader or staff member see any other question in the chat that we want to surface that we may have missed? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, so I kind of like missed majority of the uh the stuff but um w when exact is it that the kids grades are going to be up so that we can link go into the portal and see yep absolutely so the parent portal will be live tomorrow um and will be reflective of their um their grades so far um and then it will remain updated uh each week with a minimum of two new assignments uh, so tomorrow it'll be live and your point of contact will be reaching out to get you your login information uh, so that you can log in and see your scholars grades. And hopefully none of that is a surprise because your point of contact should have been updating you weekly if your scholar was missing any work or there were any academic concerns. Will the grades include the past assessment test that they just took or is just like an overall um, grade for all the classes and stuff? Like the, would the assessment test would include that in there or not? If it's an assessment they took this week or re very recently, it probably won't be added yet if teachers are still grading it. But what you will see um, is an average of their coursework grades for weeks one through seven, an average of their participation grades, and then an average of any assessment grades that they've had so far. Um, so it'll be titled like weeks one to seven coursework or weeks one to seven participation. And for right now, what you will see is what their overall average is in those categories is and what their overall grade is. Moving forward, you'll see individual assignments entered in PowerSchool at least two per week. So for the start, it's just gonna look like, okay, I know where my scholar is for coursework right now or for assessments right now overall. 
but then moving forward through the rest of the year, you'll be able to see, oh, this is the exit ticket from Friday, and this is the grade on Friday's exit ticket or on the chapter two um, assessment. So there'll be individual assignments and the overall average moving forward. I hope that made sense. And another thing, I'm sorry. Um, is this just gonna be like a website or does it um, come with like an app for the phones or is it, I have to go on Safari or whatever, the internet to keep logging in and see the grades? Yeah, absolutely. You can log in online just on a computer, but there is an app and the app is super user friendly um, and really makes it easy to like go in and see stuff real time. So I would recommend downloading the PowerSchool app, um, okay. but you can also log in through um, the portal. Yep, absolutely. I had a question. I just switched, um, I, I used the form and switched my, my Scholar from um, hybrid to full remote, but it's a waiting list. When do we find out that they've officially been switched? Sorry, my audio cut out really quick. Did you say you're um, looking to move your Scholar from hybrid into fully remote and you wanna know when you'll hear confirmation? Correct. Got it. Ms. Lopez, can you just confirm the timeline? Yeah, I typically respond to families um, by Friday. Great, so if you filled it out this week, um, Ms. Lopez will get back to you by Friday and confirm everything. Can I just clarify something as well? Um, if I heard you correctly, there shouldn't be like a quote unquote waiting list for full remote. There's only a waiting list for in-person learning. Yeah, the, the, you're filling out the form regardless, um, just for documentation purposes so that we all can streamline where that information goes. I'm sorry, I got a little dark in here very fast. But the response to switch to remote is obviously like a yes. It's just about the documentation purposes, which is why all families here for me on Friday. So regardless of where you're switching to, we just wanted to streamline where we got this information, have it all in one place one person, that one person being me, messages to everyone what the changes are. Awesome, thanks for clarifying that, Ms. Walker. I have another question. Sure. Did you guys figure out a day yet for the uh, after school to start or is it still like, um, like in the air? Yeah, so um, our after school team has been uh, diligently rolling out remote after school um, and in person after school will be slated to start um, at least one week after we start in person learning. Um, so with our recent shift in timeline, they're also working to shift theirs and haven't nailed down the exact date. So that should be forthcoming soon, uh, but it will definitely be um, at least one week after we get students back in the building, um, along with, you know, in alignment with like our phased in uh, approach. And what about like early drop off? Is that like off the table? We're doing like regular drop off, right? Yeah, at this point, unfortunately, yes. Um, when we get to phase three and we're all fully back, we hope to be able to offer that again to families. Uh, but with the current uh, safety protocols and screening and things that have to go into the start of the day, it's not something that we can offer at the start of phase two. So just 8.30 arrival um, for all scholars. Hi, Ms. Strong. This is Tanika Smith, Leah Smith's mom. Um, Leah is currently in 100% learning right now, remote learning, and I would like for her to do the hybrid um, for the second trimester. When do that start? Because I just filled out the form for the hybrid learning, the blended learning. 
Yeah, um, absolutely. So our learning choice windows um, have been extended. So whoever is shifting into hybrid right now in this first phase, that choice will remain um, through uh, January when we get back from winter break. We will be sending another uh, survey out to families in December so that you can confirm like, yes, I want to shift to hybrid in January. And that will give us uh, the month of December to get all the roster changes finalized. So you should get that in the first week um, of December to change your choice for January. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Strong. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Have a good night. You do the same. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, families, if there are no other outstanding questions for right now, uh, we will go ahead and call, uh, call it a day on this chat and chew. Uh, we will be back here next week, same time, same place, um, sharing more information about uh, power school and grades um, and making sure everyone has access as we get ready to close out trimester one. Um, but please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to the leadership team, to me directly at any time with follow-up questions. As I shared earlier, if you shoot me an email and you do not hear a response within 36 to 48 hours, please reply and put it right back at the top of my inbox. Do not feel bad about that. Um, I try to be very diligent, as do all of our staff members, about adhering to that 36-hour response time. Um, but it may get lost in the shuffle. So please assume uh, that that's what happened and bring it right back up to my inbox so I can make sure I get you the information that you need. Um, and I appreciate your flexibility and your support. I know that we're navigating some crazy times together, uh, but I, I wouldn't wanna do it with any other community. So I appreciate all of you. Mara, I appreciate you being here as our student representative. Uh, holding it down for fifth grade. Um, and I hope that everyone has a really wonderful evening. Again, don't hesitate to reach out if other questions come up throughout the week. Um, I am happy to, uh, happy to support and help. So have a great night, everyone. Take care. Bye.